Thank you. Thank you, and um, thank you to everybody for inviting me along this evening um, to talk about one of my favourite subjects, and that's Whitaker's chocolate. Uh, Whitaker's. I, I'll give you a brief history of Whitaker's, and then I'll I'll, I'll talk about a few of the principles that we follow. Uh, and let me tell you from the outset, there's no silver bullets in all of this. Uh, it's, it's the result, I think, of, of, of a very, very sort of hard work. And the result of Andrew and Brian, the current directors of, of the business, you know, really committed to growing and producing cho high quality chocolate, world class chocolate. The vision that we have at Whitaker's and I can say ambition, you know, whatever you like to call it, is the world-loving, world-class chocolate from Porirua. And that's what drives everything. So everything about the business has to be world-class. The company was founded in 1896 by James Henry Whitaker, uh, and he, he had um, emigrated from, from the UK. Uh, he, he, lived, um, he lived in Macclesfield. Now, none of you would have been, been to Macclesfield. Oh, you have. Now you know why. You know why he left it then. Yeah. Um, and in, arrived in New Zealand in 1890 and set up Whitaker's in 1896 in Christchurch. It then moved to to Wellington, um, and the factory was in the centre of Wellington, uh, just off Vivian Street. And it moved to the current site in 1969 uh, in Porirua, uh, and it was on one section. And subsequently, we've bought the section next door, um, which has got a big warehouse on it. And a couple of years, about 18 months ago, we bought the section the other side. So we are fully committed to New Zealand. We're not moving to China, Thailand, Australia, or anywhere. We're fully committed to New Zealand, and we've invested a lot in the factory, and we're continuing to invest. The company is still New Zealand-owned. Um, Andrew and Brian are the current directors and they are third generation Whitakers. There are fourth generation Whitakers in, in, in the business. Holly Whitaker is a marketing manager. Matt Whitaker, th these are Andrew's uh, children. Matt Whitaker is in charge of the international business. So <coughs> they're fourth generation in there. Both Matt and Holly have young children as well, very young children. So there's a fifth generation coming through. So the, 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 the dynasty will continue. Um, so let me show you this first chart. Now I'll show you this chart for two reasons. The first reason is the, the, the winner of the most trusted brand, uh, the second and third companies are normally sort of Sony, Toyota, Samsung, although they've, they've slipped a bit. Um, it is big multinational companies, um, much bigger than, than, than Whitaker's. Uh, and but you know size doesn't always count uh, you know we, we we have a very strict sort of policy on, on quality of the product and I think that's why we win this this award um, we're also the most loved brand um, which brand do you reckon comes number two in the most loved brand uh, it's your blacks <laughs> It's the All Blacks. So we're the only team in the world that continually beat the All Blacks. <laughs> <laughs> so we're, we're very proud of that. And it's a chart I love showing. That's the second reason I show it. I like it. And, and everybody in the company is very proud of that. And um, we, we probably we, we don't celebrate success as well as we should do. But for the last few years, when we've won that, we've taken the whole company out, out to lunch. So, you know, it's, it, and it's, it, it's an award that it's, it, it goes back to the, I think, to the heart of the company. Um, it is a family company. Um, and, uh, you know, the, the, the people that work there are very proud to, to, to work there. So let's talk a few, a, about a, a few of the principles. If you think about... Whitakers, uh, well, think about most consumer markets in New Zealand. Um, the consumer is uh, bombarded with choice. You know, the consumer problem is choice. It's not one of supply. You know, most, most products are in good supply. It's, a, it's, it's, it's one of choice. And Whitakers is up against Cadbury, Nestle, Lint, and Mars. 
for huge multinational companies, much bigger than us, much bigger resources, and, and they're, you know, blue chip companies, you know, uh, very, very good companies. So we have to make sure that uh, what we do is better than what they do. Otherwise, we won't survive. We'll, we'll just, you know, we'll, we'll just sink. So successful brands build a strong brand culture. Consumers like to be in a community, and you're all in the community now, um, and uh, brought together by a brand called Auckland University. Strong brands uh, act like magnets, and they build these communities around them. And what they do is, the, the people in those communities, uh, what we say is we want to move, move people from being spectators, that's people that are aware of the brand, to supporters. And supporters of a brand will not go to another brand. You know. So it's very, very important to build those, those supporters. Many years ago, I used to work for Unilever. And during what, one of the companies I worked for, the CEO, was an accountant. Actually, he's worse than that. He was a Dutch accountant. <laughs> uh, no Dutch accountants in the audience? Oh, that's good. I did come across one in an audience once. but uh, Anyway, he was a Dutch accountant. So I went into his office one day. I said, uh, I need a meeting with you next Tuesday. Now, all right. Wednesday? No. Nope. Well, can I meet you on Thursday? No. Nope. That's the type of conversation, dynamic conversation you used to have with him. <laughs> and I said, oh... Why can't I see you next week then? I'm away. Oh. Holiday? No. Uh, business? No. I said, well, I'm getting a bit irritated by it. I said, well, where are you going? He said, I'm going to a convention. I thought, oh, a chartered accountant's convention. That's going to be good. <laughs> um, and, uh, and so I you know, bit my lip. And I said, oh, you're going to a chartered accountant's convention? No. He said, I'm going to a Harley Davidson convention. <laughs> well. You know, he must have seen the look on my face. <laughs> and he started talking about Harley Davidson, and he almost became animated, you know, for a Dutch account. <laughs> uh, and he told me how, um, when he was at university in Amsterdam, he had bought a Harley Davidson, that's the first one he had. And ever since then, um, he'd, he'd always owned a Harley Davidson, and every year, he, where, where, wherever he was in the world, you know, he went to, he, he tried to get to the Harley Davidson convention. And... Uh, and, uh, you know, again, I had to bite my lip because you can imagine it. You know, this dull, boring, grey Unilever accountant would change his suit and put on his Harley leathers <laughs> and for one week a year. And, uh, you know, he'd, he'd go to this convention. And at the convention, there'd be company directors, uh, bikers, gang members, and, you know, goodness knows who. And, but the, the important thing is, Harley Davidson acted as a magnet. And it, drove, and it drew all of those people into it. Does anybody here own a Harley? No. Um, and I, I guarantee, I, I don't know anything about motorbikes, but I guarantee that um, you know, if you own a Harley Davidson, you're not going to buy a Honda or Suzuki or, or, or whatever because you're a supporter of, of that brand. And the, the, the thing, and again, I don't know the technical details about motorbikes, but you know, the thing that really... Um, separates Harley Davidson from those other motorbikes is the emotional driver. It's all about the freedom of the road, which was encapsulated in a film in the late 60s. And I'm looking around the audience and probably. Easy ride. Well done, well done. God, you know. Normally, when I'm doing this, the, the, you know, our generation is not well represented. <laughs> and nobody's seen the film. But it's, it's, uh, it was, and, and that's, again, emotional drivers are so important because rational aspects of a brand can be copied. The emotional ones are unique. And uh, as I say, Harley Davids has, has this emotional um, sort of freedom of the road. So this Unilever guy, for one week a year, he's free, you know, and, and he goes out to his, and drives his Harley around. Um, so very important to build a culture. And we, we, we um, do build a, a, a strong culture with, with Whitakers because we, we are a family company. Uh, we are New Zealand. But above all, we are fanatical about the, the, the quality of the product. And it's chocolate. You know, it's a small indulgence. 
you know, you're, you're going to eat it, you're going to put it in your mouth. You do not want to be disappointed. You know, and quality is absolutely critical. And, and, and that's how we, um, and we're the only major chocolate company in New Zealand that do the whole manufacturing po process. Import the cocoa beans, the whole process, the whole nine yards through to the end product. And we do that, it'd probably be cheaper for us to import cocoa liquor because there's companies in, in the, around the world who specialize in, in producing cocoa liquor. Uh, and because of the economies of scale they've got, it's cheaper. Um, but you can never ever guarantee the quality. You know, by doing it yourself, you guarantee the quality. So, you know, uh, and you know, it's chocolate, people put it in their mouth. If you put palm oil in it, people will pick it up. You know, and quickly, you know. Everybody's an expert on chocolate, particularly females. <laughs> um, and uh, it's, it's people notice a change very quickly. So you build a, brand, a, a, build a strong brand culture and build strong relationships with customers. The best way to build a relationship with your customer, get the product quality right, but then build a strong relationship with the customers through storytelling. All brands, all great brands have good stories behind them. Um, and with Whitakers, we focus very much on what we call, what, what is unique to Whitakers? Um, first of all, the bean to bar, and that is a signal of quality. Um, as again, you know, Cadbury, Nestle, um, Mars cannot claim bean to bar in New Zealand. Um, we, we are family and, 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 and New Zealand. And, and with, with the New Zealandness, we, we, we don't want people to buy Whitaker's chocolate because it's a New Zealand brand. You know, I think it's a bit pathetic, really. We want them to buy it because it's the best quality chocolate and they love the quality of the chocolate. The fact that it's a New Zealand brand helps, you know, is another added factor. Uh, and family, family is important because generally um, family owned companies and family driven companies have uh, they're just more detail, more passion, um, more energy going into the quality of the product. You know, I've worked for multinationals and I work for family companies. And I can tell you, you know, the focus on quality in family companies is, is, is far greater. I'm not saying multinationals, you know, that, that don't um, focus on, you know, don't, don't look at quality, but, you know, compare us with Cadbury. Um, so build strong relationships with the customers through the storytelling and ideally, you know, have unique properties that you can tell to, 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 the, to the customers. I'll talk about um, some of the, the sort of, I, I guess, the sort of the aspects of, 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 of what we do at Whitakers in, in, in building the company. First, always, you know, a company must have a clear vision. Um, and everybody um, in the company must understand that vision. And the vision must be, I think, ambitious. Uh, and, uh, you know, and, and everybody, if everybody understands it as the ambition, then everybody works towards it. And as I say, our ambition is for the world loving world class chocolate from Porirua. Um, so, and, and, and the sort of the, the essence of that is world class, world class chocolate. And as I say, that sort of drives everything else. And we wouldn't survive or prosper unless we sort of really sort of focused on, on, on that. And the world loving means we, we, are, we are very strong in New Zealand but we do have ambitions to develop an international business. It will be slow, it will be slow because, um, you know, by, by definition, a, a, a company based, a consumer goods company based in New Zealand, uh, any other market it's, go it's going into is gonna be bigger. You know, and, and we are coming off a small base, um, but we are gradually building um, our business. So we are in a lot of the Asian countries, we're now in Canada, um, we're in China, we're in Walmart in China. So little by little, we're building the brand in, in that in international markets area. But it will take time, but it will take time. But that's the vision. And in, in doing that, we will never ever lose the, the world class aspiration. 
because that is, 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 is very important. Values, again, the, the value of the company is, is, is really uh, comes back to the quality, and we always say we do not cut corners. However, we have a product called a sandy bar, and guess what? We cut the corner. <laughs> Now, this is where Brian and Andrew are very clever and, and going back to that world-class aspect. Um, Santee Bar was, was sold in dairies, uh, it has been sold in, was sold in dairies for years, unwrapped. Now, we wanted to get it into supermarkets. You cannot ha have it in supermarkets wrapped. So what we did, or uh, well, what Andrew and Brian did, was to find a machine that would wrap a Santee Bar. Now, if any engineers or packaging people amongst you will know, that wrapping something with a curved end like that is very difficult, very difficult. And in the end, uh, they, they, they searched the world and found a machine in Italy, took it back to, to Wellington, and I think you know, in typical New Zealand fashion, made a few amendments to it and made it work. They sent these products to Italy and said, your machine is wonderful, it's packing these sandy bars now. Italians couldn't believe it. I think they even sent somebody out just to make sure that uh, you know, it, it, it was true. But, again, the important point is now the accountants would have said, well, square up the end, <laughs> you know. The production efficiencies will be much better, everything will be a lot easier, uh, the machine will be cheaper, and everybody will be happy apart from the consumer. And, and, this, and the accountants, you know, don't get me wrong, you know, accountants have a role. Um, <laughs> and and uh, they were right to ask the question, but what they do, they ask the question, but they miss the point. Um, because the whole mnemonic of this brand was that curve. And Cadbury's have had a whack at this over, over a number of years. They brought out a uh, you know, sort of stick like this. Guess what? The end's, curve, the end's uh, squared up. And so the, pro the product didn't have any identity. You know, that whole curve is the identity of that product. And, you know, and, and the history of, 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 of the product. So it goes back to the values, you know. It, it goes back to world class and uh, defending the values, not only of, of, of the company, but of, of the products, the individual products as well. So, and very successful, very successful. In fact, you know, the, the, the problem that we have is, it's, it's, uh, we, we can't really sort of meet the demand for that. Um, but, you know, Again, it's 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 that, and you know, if if it squared up the end, it wouldn't taste it wouldn't taste any different, but it would lose that identity. So don't listen to the accountants. Um, so values, strong identity. Um, met, met, this was the first pack that we had in gold. This was again. This was was was. Um, uh, launched in the early 50s, unwrapped, and sold in, 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 in dairies for, for, for years. We wanted to get it into supermarkets, so we had to wrap it, and it was wrapped in 1984, and that was the first gold wrap. Um, and uh, gold is, is, is very much the sort of the, the, the color of, of, of the brand, because again, you know, if, if, if you're shopping in supermarkets, you know, you don't really like it. Um, and, and you're up against a lot of other products. Uh, so you want to have a clear, strong identity. Um, when you go to the chocolate section, uh, we, we say what we try and achieve, and, and we say we want, uh, you know, all, with all the blocks merchandise, we want a wall of gold. Uh, because then people can easily identify the Whitaker's prod product. We want a wall of gold. Now, there might be a little wall of purple next to it, but all that. Um, uh, so, so the strong identity is, is, is very, very important. And, you know, gold is, is very much the, the brand colour, which is, you know, a premium colour, uh, denotes a sort of premium product. Um, and we're, we're very, uh, very sort of uh, strict, strict on that. And um, because strong identity is, is particularly important in, in supermarkets. Positioning, um, this is how people perceive the brand, uh, not only in their hearts, but in their minds. And often the heart is, 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 is more important and th than the mind. So when we position the brand, 
We talk about bean to bar um, because that's very much uh, shorthand for, for quality. Uh, you know, people realise that if, you, if you're spending that amount of detail in, in roasting the beans and, you know, the beans are roasted for a certain amount of time and, you know, there's, there's some magic there uh, which Brian and Andrew have developed over the years. Um, so they are, you know, very, very strict on, 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 on that quality and uh, so beans to bar is important. Uh, the family is, is important because, again, what that communicates about the, the quality, the effort and the enthusiasm that goes into the product. So most of our advertising um, is signed off from Andrew and Brian. And again, the, the, the New Zealand part is, is, is important as well. And also we, we certainly sort of underpin that um, with, the, with the, the quality of the ingredients that we put in. I only use Ghanaian cocoa beans. And all of the ingredients that, that we put in, we have higher percentage of inclusions than other brands. So if you look at our hazelnut product, for example, it's got a higher percentage of hazelnuts in it than, than the Cadbury product. And, that, and that's true across all of the, 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 the products. So again, that goes back to sort of the positioning of, 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 of the brand in people's minds, it's better quality. In one of the um, focus groups we did many years ago, uh, and focus groups with chocolate are very interesting because you have to segregate them. You cannot have males and females in the same group because females have this sort of slight guilt complex about chocolate. And if there's males in the group, they won't talk. Um, <laughs> if it's just females in the group, uh, they do talk. And for many years when I was working with Unilever, I, I, I worked on product cat categories like detergents, toothpaste, deodorants, things like that. And if you did a focus group, they would last probably about two hours, by which time it was dragging a bit. Because there's only so much you can say about a detergent, really. <laughs> um, the first one that we did with, with chocolate, at the end of three hours, uh, the, the moderator of the group came out and said, you know, have we got enough information? And poor woman, she was absolutely exhausted because there were eight women in this group. Uh, and they've been consuming chocolate all the, all the way through. <laughs> uh, and, 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 uh, and, uh, and there were some, some lovely comments come, came out of it. Firstly, it was, we were, it was when we were launching a square, our squares product. Um, and it's 10 and a half grams. A square is 10 and a half grams of chocolate. And one woman, woman said, oh, it's 10 and a half grams of chocolate. That's fabulous. I can eat as many as I like. And I could never sort of quite work out the logic of that. <laughs> And then another woman said, oh, said, I really love Whitaker's products. Um, and, uh, you know, they're so generous. He said, I like Whitaker's products because they've got bigger and better nuts. And I thought, well, <laughs> I don't think we can use that in advertising. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so positioning, very, very, very important. Communication is critical. If you think about the, the vision, the values, the identity and the positioning, Communication, successful communication brings all of those together and very much builds the, the bridge to the consumer. So it's, it's very, very critical in, in building that relationship to the consumer. Many, uh, must be about five or six years ago now, we launched the creamy milk product with uh, the five roll refined process. Uh, and I won't go into all the detail, but the, the, the process of, 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 of re refining it through five rollers uh, gives you a, a, a smoother product, um, a nicer mouth feel, and, and just an overall better quality. And again, this is where Andrew and Brian are really clever because Whitaker's never had a problem with quality, um, and uh, which is true, you know, it's better quality than other, other products. Know, obviously, I'm biased, but. Um, it's because it's better, it's better quality, it's got 33% cocoa. Competitor brands won't have as much. Um, our dark chocolate uh, doesn't have any milk solids in it. Um, so, and, and I think the reason for that, and whereas competitor brands do, because I think they're using cheaper cocoa beans and they might be slightly more bitter, so the milk knocks the flavor back a bit. 
Not sure, but um, anyway, we, we do not um, use milk solids in, 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 in our dark chocolate. So, and, and if you're a dark chocolate lover and haven't tasted our dark chocolate, taste it, because it really is fabulous. All from Ghana and cocoa beans. Um, so, sorry, I digress slightly. Um, <laughs> so, and Brian, uh, with the milk chocolate, Brian and Andrew had this sort of nagging doubt in the back of their mind. If we want to be world class, uh, there's an improvement that we can make uh, by using a five roll refined process. It will just improve the, the smoothness, the mouthfeel of, of, of the product, you know, just give it a nicer edge. And I said, well, it's not a problem, you know, quality is not a problem. Oh, no, 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 we, we think we can do it, we can do it. Uh, the, the machinery for this uh, run, runs in, the investment ran into five figures, you know, it was huge, it was huge. Um, and, uh, but it did improve the quality of, of, of the chocolate. Um, now from a communication point of view, really difficult because if people are happy with a the product, uh, they think it's better than the other products on the market, uh, the last thing they want you to do is change it. Why change it? You know, I like your product. You know, it's, it's better, I like it, why change it? Because we can make it even better. Well, you know, but I'm, you know, I'm not sure that I want you to do that. So we, the communication was very, very difficult. We explained to the agency that we were improving the product and the communication <coughs> had to convince people that they needed to try this product because it, it had been improved, even though they liked what they were eating at the time. Most difficult problem to, you know, to, to actually do in communications. If you've got a problem with a product and you say, you know, uh, we've improved the product, we put enzymes in it or blue specks or whatever it is with detergents. Um, you know, we've improved it, it'll make your washing whiter, you know, try it. Easy story and, and you know, uh, it, it, it's a simple story. This one was very difficult. So the agency, and, and I, I give credit to the agency, uh, our accountant didn't, uh, 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 they came up and they said there's only one person in the world that can convince people to buy this new improved chocolate. And we said, oh, who's that? I said, Nigella Lawson. Oh, good God. <laughs> you know? And, and, uh, and when you think about it, you know, and we thought about it for two minutes, really, a bit, bit longer. Um, <laughs> um, you know, it, you, you want to communicate chocolate, uh, which is, a sm you know, indulgent, smooth, and Nigella is ideal to do that because she is slightly indulgent, very smooth, and, and the rest, you know. <laughs> uh, I don't know. And, and, and the good thing about Nigella is she is very, very popular, not only with, she's popular with, eat, with everybody, not only females, but males as well. And uh, probably for different reasons, but <laughs> very, very popular and ideal to communicate chocolate values. We told the accountant, and uh, because, as you can imagine, Angela is uh, not cheap. Um, so we told the accountant and told him how much it was going to cost. And he went quite white. And, and uh, when he sort of recovered, he said, oh, well, what's the ROI going to be on Nigella? <laughs> and you think, oh, come on. Yeah. Only an accountant can reduce Nigella to an ROI. Yeah. And I said, I don't know. I don't know, I said, but, uh, uh, and I can make up some figures, you know, if you want, you know, but I, I just don't know. Um, but what we can say is that uh, since she, she, she advertised this initially, um, and it, uh, this is now the number one SKU in, in the chocolate market. Now, five years ago, if you'd have said to me, and I'm the Chief Marketing Officer of Whitakers, would, uh, Whitaker's creamy milk be a higher seller than Cadbury dairy milk, which has been around for years, you know, part of New Zealand history, part of the culture and everything. Would it be a higher seller? You know, I'm not sure that I would have bet my house on it, you know, but uh, anyway, it did, it did. And, um, you know, and we, we have used Nigella very successfully to launch the, uh, this is the, 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 the artisan range. Um, uh, which is using, obviously, Whitaker's chocolate, but using 
uh, artisan companies from around New Zealand to incorporate in, in, into the chocolate. So this one has got marvelous sea salt and caramel brittle, which is fabulous. If you haven't tried that, fabulous. Um, uh, and again, we use Nigella. And in that 100 gram market, uh, and we've just launched a new range, which is called the Destinations range. And so this range is using artisan producers from New Zealand. Uh, with the destinations range, we've actually got out to the world. So we are bringing artisan products to New Zealand. No expense spared. You know. Again, though, if you think about it, uh, we want to be world class. You know, and uh, it, it's, it's been interesting. This is the uh, Italian Piedmont Hazna. Um, so the um, hazelnuts come from Piedmont in, 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 in Italy. Very, very expensive because I think that was one of the original areas that peanuts were grown. You know, and, and, uh, but again, you know, uh, we, we searched the world and that's where we, we, we got uh, those peanuts, uh, peanuts, hazelnuts from. So again, if you want to be world class, you have to, uh, and, and the, this 100 gram range, if you think about this 100 gram range, the, the major brand in the 100 gram sector was Lint. And Lint, a very good company, very good quality chocolate, uh, very well uh, marketed. Um, and we have gone in there and uh, they had 70% of that market before we went in there, 70, 75% of the market, because there's no other competitors. <coughs> um, they've now got about 30 and we've got about 40. That is the value of Nigella, <coughs> as I say to the accountant. Ah, <laughs> uh, that's it. And he goes, mmm, mm, mm, you know, mutter, 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 but she's expensive. Can't we get somebody cheaper? Well, of course we could. We could, we could, get, could get somebody cheaper. We, we did f have a bit of um, slight criticism in, in uh, using Nigella because uh, she's obviously not New Zealand and we're a New Zealand brand. And one or two people said, well, you know, why didn't you use a New Zealand foodie? And, and don't get me wrong, there's some very good foodie, whatever you like to call them, you know, food people in New Zealand. But I don't think any of them are world class yet. They wouldn't have the world class reputation of Nigella. They may do in the future, uh, you know, they may do, but I'm not sure that they would have the same impact as Nigella does at the moment. And as I say, that may change in the future, but you know, we're talking about now. So, uh, but to, to go in and, and uh, take that type of market share away from Lint, you know, it goes back to great product, great quality product, and you know, great communication using Nigella. Uh, and, and that's the value. You know, trouble with accountants only look at cost. You, know, you have to look at value. You have to look at value. So communication, very, very important. Um, so in all of this, what have we learned? You know? um, and there's, there's a number of key lessons coming out of this for us. Uh, and, and I think it, that, that, you know, it applies to the Whitaker's business, but I think it, it, it is uh, the general, and I think they apply to a lot of businesses. The first thing, you have to have a strong brand. You know, and no matter all the studies that have been done around the world about successful, profitable companies, uh, the strength of the brand is always paramount. You know, have a strong brand, understand what your rational values are, but even more so understand what your emotional drivers are because your emotional drivers will be the unique um, values of, of your brand. And you must have a strong brand because you're in, you know, you know, you're in competition. There will be other brands coming in and uh, you, know, you just want to be very, very strong. Now the next point, uh, in, intuition and talent, um, it, it's a, a bit difficult to explain. Uh, we do not do any consumer research. Um, now, and, and don't get me wrong, I'm not saying, you know, uh, Consumer research is, is, is not relevant. But we do not do any consumer research 
because you know our philosophy is we should know our business and you should know your business better than than anybody else certainly better than consumers you know and and uh I think, you know, and, and marketing people are dreadful for, for this, they tend to hide behind consumer research and companies tend to, to hide behind res consumer research. You know, you often hear people say, oh, I'm not sure what you want to do, you know, uh, we've got a few ideas, let's ask consumers about it. Well, if you don't know, consumers aren't going to know. You know, your business uh, is life and death to you. It's not life and death to consumers, you know. If your business fails, you don't get any money and you don't eat. You know, with, with consumers, you know, if you think about toothpaste or, you know, so, so, it's not the biggest decision of their day, you know. So, so um, we, we rely a lot on intuition. Um, and it goes back to talent, you know. If you're going to follow that, you have to have very talented people working on your business. Um, and we, we're very uh, careful in the selection of, of, of our people. Um, and we invest in them heavily. So in, in the mar on the marketing side, um, we've got two marketing managers, one uh, Jasmine Griffin and, and the other is Holly Whitaker. And I would have employed Holly uh, even if her name wasn't Whitaker, because she had spent, um, she'd gone through university and she'd spent time in London working as an art director for Saatchi and Saatchi in London. Now anybody that knows the London advertising scene will know you have to be very talented and very tough to survive in that. Uh, I think, you know, notice period is 24 hours, you know, if you're lucky. Um, very, very tough and, and, and she did very well in that. So we have two marketing managers. Both of them have been to Stanford uh, because it's the best business school in the world. Now I know where I'm standing. Um, <laughs> And again, you know, uh, probably a brave thing to say standing here, isn't it? But uh, I, I think, you know, the people at Auckland Business School and Auckland will, will admit uh, at the moment Stanford has a, a better reputation than Auckland, you know. Um, and in the future that may change. That may change. You know, but at the moment, again, it goes back to world class. You know, Stanford is world class. Is Auckland world class at the moment? I'm not sure, uh, and it may change. You know, and it may may, may get be better. But you know, we 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 invest heavily in those people because we expect them to use their intuition. You know, and uh, you, you could say, uh, you know, it's 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 the way that we do it, rightly or wrongly. You know, it's it, it's it's the way that we do it. Um, and I, I, I suspect we are a bit different in, 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 in that way. And we're not a, con you know, and this is another thing that may seem a bit strange, we're not a consumer-led company. You know, and, and I, again, I think people get this wrong in, in that, um, you know, you see these dreadful ads which say, oh, we have listened to the consumer and this is what we're doing now. And you think, oh. And normally it's after the company's made a massive mistake. You know, and, and um, we, we have, uh, and this is very much Jasmine's uh, area, 700,000 people on, uh, on Facebook. That is an enormous slice of, the you know, of New Zealand. Because chocolate, and, and we're lucky because chocolate is an interesting category. And we have, you know, there's a dialogue with them continually. <coughs> and you learn an awful lot that way. You know, we, we, so that's, if, if, if you like, that's our consumer research. We, 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 we have a relationship with a consumer, we're not consumer-led. I'm not sure if that makes sense, <laughs> you know, but, uh, you know, uh, because consumers don't know what they want, you know. They just don't. And, and uh, so, uh, you know, that, that, that's the way that, that, that we run it, which may be different. Uh, and, and uh, you know, you may say that's wrong, you may say it's right. But you know, it's 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 the way that we do it. So intuition and talent is very important, and they go together. You know, you know your business better than consumers. You know what you want to do more than consumers. You know, have the you know, you know, have the courage to do it. You know, take the consumers along with you. Don't wait for them to tell you what to do. If you wait for them to tell you what to do, you'll be behind all the time. 
Speed, we like to do things quickly. Uh, so quick that the accountant can't stop us. Um, but I, I think speed is important. And, and uh, let me tell you this. Some years ago, there was, we, we had a, a, an ad on TV when the palm oil thing came up. There was an ad on TV, a pack shot of Orpiticus, a pack shot of Cadbury, and going through a list of things that they had done, a list of things that we had done. Um, that whole ad took, uh, because we, we, we'd seen what they, what they had, had done, and we thought, well, you know, consumers should know about this. And the whole ad took two days uh, to write, conceive, shoot, and get on air. Uh, because there was an opportunity there. There was a moment in time, there was an opportunity. So if you see that, you've got to seize it, you know. And, uh, uh, it, it was very successful. It was very successful. And sales shut up 35% over the next few weeks. The good thing about it was what it, what it gave Whitakers was a huge sampling campaign. I couldn't believe the number of people that hadn't tried Whitakers. You know, and we got all these people coming back and saying, oh, you know, I just tried Whitakers, it's fabulous. And you think, well, it's been around for 100 years. You know, <laughs> should have tried it before. Um, but it gave us a huge chart sampling campaign, and what was good was the sales didn't just go psh, psh, and come back down again, because it went back to the quality of the product. You know, the quality of the people tried it, they perceived it was better, and stayed with it. <coughs> and uh, if you look at the, the Whitaker's market share in, in the block market, that's in, in, in this market, over the last uh, probably sort of 10 years, 12 years, it's quadrupled. Uh, and we haven't done it on price. We've done it on quality. Our product sells at a premium to Capra. Um, this product sells at a premium to Lint. You know, because we are not price driven, we're quality driven. And it will always be that way. Well, as long as I'm there. <laughs> you know, it, it, will, it will always be that way. Because in the end, if you're price driven, somebody will always come in lower than you. You know, always happens. I know. So intuition, talent, speed, and take risks, you know. You have to take risks in, 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 and, uh, and I always think taking risks is, is, is the fun part of the business. You know, um, but, you know, if the intuition and talent is right, the risk is reduced. You don't really reduce risk by doing market research. You know, you can a bit, you know, but... Uh, I, and, and, th and that's another thing, you know, where marketing people uh, get market research wrong. They want to reduce the risk, so they say, right, we do some market research, ask the consumer, you know. And a lot of the time it fails, and people will say, oh, this has failed, and, and they say, well, you know, and the defense for marketing is, well, research said this. You know, I think, well, it doesn't matter what research says, it's failed. Um, so I think, you know, if you're using research, just be very careful what you're using it for. Just say, why are you using it? Why can't I answer the question? Why haven't I got the confidence to answer the questions?